guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you guys already didn't know, my name is Morgan, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over how to properly half stuff in the kitchen. Um, I haven't done a baking or cooking video in a while, so I thought I'd just do something simple around the baking and cooking topic, um, because I know people do half recipes instead of having a full recipe because it's either one of them or there's only two or three people instead of you're feeding like five or six people. Alright, so I'm going to be going over glass measuring cups, a glass measuring cup like this. Hopefully there isn't a glare, the ring light's facing the camera, so it gets better, video, uh, better light of a glass measuring cup. I have teaspoons and tablespoons, and then I have regular metal measuring cups. So let's get into today's video. Alrighty, so hopefully I am in frame. Sorry if it's shaking my foot's hitting it. I have some notes that I do want to go over on my computer. I will, I'm going to be refer referencing off a chart that I found on Pinterest. I just double checked it to make sure it's correct. So I have two charts referencing to the same thing. Alright, so I'm going to start with a glass measuring cup. So I don't know if you guys can see. I'll like turn around and show you guys. But there are markings on it. So this is for like pints and stuff. So we have 8 ounces, 6 ounces, 4 ounces, and 2 ounces. This is just a 1 cup measuring cup. And it's just 1, 3 fourths, half a cup, and a fourth. And then there's like liters and stuff here. So I'm just going to show you guys this really quickly. Okay, you guys can kind of see. So there's the 1 cup, the 3 fourths, half a cup, and the 1 fourth. And then there are your ounces. Um, you have 8 ounces, which is half a pint, 2 thirds a cup, and then a third of a cup. And then here's the other side, which you guys can kind of see. You have your 1 liter, which is kind of faded, and then you have like, I don't know what that is. I don't use the side. I don't use the milliliters. I just use the other side. But that's that. Liter, but. A glass measuring cup, what I learned, is mostly and only used for liquids. So that could, that's like milk, water, vegetable oil, any type of oil that you're cooking with, just generally liquids. Um, the best way that I learned how to measure liquids was by, you can kind of like bend down and pour your water or whatever liquid you're using into your measuring cup. Um, and that's how you can get more of like an exact measure, measure in your liquids. The second thing is that... Um, a glass measuring cup can come in one cup, two cup, three cup, sorry, two cup, four cup, and eight cup. Um, I'm sure you can probably find like a ten cup somewhere. I don't know if that's the thing, it probably is. But, um, so like I said, the best way is by bending down and pouring your liquid while your measuring cup is on a flat surface like a counter or a table. That's how you can get a more of an exact measure with something like this and usually I'm sure you can find plastic I think we have like one or two plastic ones in my house um, but I just usually use a glass when measuring ingredients for like a cake or some sort of recipe okay so the next thing I have is metal measuring cups again I'll insert a clip with um, like the measurements and stuff have these ones with your one fourth, which is 60 milliliters. I believe that's milliliters. If not, I'm probably wrong. But there's your fourth of a cup, and then you have your third cup. Sorry, my hands are like really shaky. I don't know why. And then you have your half a cup, and then after this is obviously your one. So I have four here. This is mostly what you can buy. Um, you can buy, like, a bigger pack with, like, three-fourths, two-thirds on, like, probably Amazon or something. But metals are mostly only used for dried ingredients. Um, every once in a while, if you're making a cake, that can calls for, like, sour cream or something that calls for cream cheese or something that calls for honey. It's easier to just measure with one of these. Essentially, these are pretty much the same thing. It's just easier to measure with these because you can scoop it out. And it just makes life so much easier. Um, you can measure properly by spooning, 
spooning flour, so you're going to take like a spoon, pretend I have a spoon in my hand, and you're going to scoop your flour into your measuring cup and level it off with a knife or something. The improper way is to take a measuring cup and scoop in your flour, and then if it has like a lid, you wipe off like whatever's on the top. It just packs in like all the flour or whatever you're using, and it just packs it down in your measuring cup. Um... So that's that, and then you can also scoop, scoop and sweep bigger grains like sugar or rice in a measuring cup. That's fine since it's a bigger grain, not such a fine, tiny grain. Um, next, I have our tablespoons and teaspoons. So these are mostly used as for spices, as you know. Um, this is actually a complete set. I don't know what like an, um, like a smaller set would be. But I have, these are magnetic, um, again I'll insert a clip, just like the other one. It'll be easy to show, so you have your eighth of a teaspoon, and then it goes all the way down to one tablespoon like last time. And this one has like the same thing as the measuring cups. Um, I also have half a tablespoon, so these metal ones come in really handy. So yeah, I definitely recommend something like these for baking and cooking. Other ones. Um, but this one I have an eighth of a teaspoon all the way down to one tablespoon and they're actually metal so they stick together. Um, these are off of Amazon, my mom got them for Christmas. But, um, so they're mostly used for spices. Um, sometimes a recipe may call for a cup of flour and a tablespoon, which is totally normal. Um, but it may be confusing. You may think, oh, I need a cup of flour for this coating of, um, for my chicken. And then they're going to say, I like a tablespoon of, like, cornstarch or something like that with that. Um, so the main thing for metals is don't let them soak in water because it just makes them rust. And, um, the proper way I would say is to put them, take, rinse them with water and a little bit of soap with a sponge, and then dry them well. Um, same with these, don't let them soak in water. Um, if it has like a little bit of flour on them, that's fine. You can just like wipe it down with like a cloth or something, and that's good. Let's stop. Okay, so now I'm going to go over how to half a recipe properly, or just generally, um, like measuring cups, that type of half. Okay, so... I don't know how many people have recipes. I usually tend to do half recipe or sometimes I'll double it if I need more than um, for making a cake or something. So I'm going to be referencing off of two charts, like I said, from Pinterest. So I'll figure out how to insert them off of Caden Live. Um, I think I have an idea how to do that, but I'll figure that out. <laughs> um, okay, so if the only thing about these charts is it doesn't do one cup, but it's pretty much um, like simple so if you're gonna do one cup of dry liquid dry or wet liquids or just liquids in general that's just gonna half that that's gonna be half a cup so if a recipe uses three-fourths of a cup that's going to be six tablespoons um, if recipe calls for two-thirds um, it's going to be one-third if you decide to half that if recipe calls for half a cup that's going to be a fourth of a cup so now this is where the tricky part comes in, it goes into tablespoons. So if I keep looking that way, it's because I just need to make sure. Okay, so if you want to half one third of a cup, that's going to be two teaspoons plus two tablespoons. If you're going to do a fourth of a cup, two tablespoons, that's it. One tablespoon is one and a half teaspoons, I believe. Yeah, one and a half teaspoons. If you're going to have one teaspoon, that's going to be half a teaspoon. And if you're going to have half a teaspoon, it's going to be one-fourth of a teaspoon. So hopefully that helps. Um, I don't know. It just might make it easier for some people if they don't understand. Uh, the way I think of it is just like a fraction. It's like math, but it's just in book baking and cooking. Come in. Here. Where'd you find it? Okay, sorry for the interruption, but 
that's pretty much it. Hopefully that helps anybody that has like a hard time. The way I think of it is just as a big fraction um, and just in baking and cooking. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time if that goes to plan. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications on, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!